Interactive Table of Contents. In this part, I am going to show you what is an interactive table of contents. And if you're not using the video that has the interactive table of contents, I'm going to give you an example of what it is and what are the benefits of using one. This is one of my own projects for my students and I teach them how to download audio from the internet in a legal way for remixing it with open source software. This video has on the left side an interactive table of contents and as you move up and down in the table of contents you're going to be able to select different parts of the video. So for example I'm going to come over here to basic operations in Audacity and I'm going to click. So basically what the interactive table of contents allows you to do is to select any part of the video and it would immediately move to that section. I cannot remember that. This interactive table of contents is very useful for students because they can move around in the content of the video without really having to sit through all of the different parts. In other words, in the same way a book works, where you can move from chapter to chapter and even so from section to section, when you provide this table of contents to your students, they're going to have more or less the same browsing behavior and the same specific use behavior of the different parts of your video. So that's why it is important to give an interactive table of contents. Another benefit is to provide the students a means to have a reference material that they can access later on if they want to review specific parts of your video. So let's imagine that now we are far into the future, your students have finished your course, but they can go back at a later time to use this recording to find a specific part that they would like to be reminded on. So once again, they can go back to your video and without having to sit through all the different parts, they can just access the knowledge that they want to obtain. So I think that now you can see how adding this interactive table of contents can add a lot of usability to your video productions. Very well, now that you know what an interactive table of contents is, now I'm going to tackle how to place markers. And markers are the way in which you name the different sections in your interactive table of contents. In other words, these different titles in the table of contents is what we are going to type in the markers on the Camtasia program. Very well, and here is Camtasia. And right now I'm going to go through the process of creating a couple of markers for you to see how that process takes place. And then I'm going to export this video in a way in which we can attach an interactive table of contents to the actual video file that Camtasia is going to produce. So to make things a lot shorter, I am going to cut this video. I'm going to split at the playhead over here and I am going to delete all of this part and I am going to do the same here. This will create a smaller video that will take less time for us to render in order for me to show you how the interactive table of content works. So the first thing that you need to do is to be aware that the same options that you have through the keyboard, you have them also through the interface or through the menu structure. In this case, I'm going to ask for the marker track by pressing Ctrl M. And now we have this extra track on top of the other tracks and this is where we're going to be placing the titles for the table of contents. So I'm going to move this to the beginning, right at the beginning, and that's when I'm going to press Alt M or Option M. And if you would like to see how this happens through the menu structure, you would have to press these two options over here. However, they are right now grayed out because I have already placed a marker over here. I always like adding a marker at the very beginning of the video so my students have the ability to return back by pressing on the interactive table of contents. So my very first marker is always called overview. Now we're going to move to another 
part, hypothetical part, in which we are going to add another marker simulating another entry in your table of contents. And I'm going to press once again Alt M or Option M. And in this case, I'm just going to choose any title that works for demonstration purposes. And if you made any mistake, you can go back, double click, and fix the mistake that you might have had. And so on. You can add as many markers as you would like. And we expect that this file will have all of these as part of the contents that you can interact with. And there it goes. So now we have these different markers over here. If you would like to move any of these markers around, it is as easy as clicking and dragging the square above the marker and you're going to be able to relocate it to whatever you want it to be. Once that you are done with your markers and they have been positioned in the right place in the timeline, remember to save so you can keep all of your marker information and later you can export by going to share and in this case we are going to select the option export as web page. This is necessary because the interactive table of contents that we're creating is going to have a component that acts on the web and interacts with your video in order to provide that functionality to your students. So that's why we need to export it at this point in time as a web page. When you do that, you're going to have this type of window. Remember that if this window is not open, it's because this arrow is pointing downwards. But if you want to open it, you can click there and it will give you a lot more options. When it comes to quality, I always recommend to go to the higher quality. And then we're going to have this option to create the table of contents from markers. So I'm going to create a folder in this document folder called test and within it I am gonna name it test of interactive table of contents and I'm gonna click on export. Remember that the process of rendering normally is fairly slow and at this moment I'm gonna pause the video for a little while but that was the main reason why I caught my video at the beginning of this lesson and it's almost there. There it is. I'm going to click on reveal in Finder. And now I can see that my test of interactive table of contents is there. And inside, there's an index file that is placed on the web and media that includes the MP4 file and all of the other files that are necessary for your interactive table of contents to work well. So I'm going to move back. I'm going to rename this so I can upload it to a server. So I'm going to take away all the different spaces. There it is. And I can do a couple of things. I can double click on this file right now to see how it's going to work. And there it is. You cannot see this table of contents at this point in time because it was rendered on a Mac. And normally I use PCs for my own productions. And at the time of my own productions, this is how the interactive of contents was produced. At this point in time, if you created your interactive table of contents with a Mac, your table of contents is going to appear over here at the bottom right part. And if you start playing the video, you can pause it and now you will have this list icon over here and if you press it you will see that the titles that we use for the markers are also the titles that appear in my interactive table of contents. In order to make that interactive table of contents go away you can click on these ones more and it will disappear. As you can see right now, this production doesn't fit really well in my browser. So one of the things that your students can do when this happens is to click on full screen and your video is going to be reduced to fit precisely the screen that the students are using. Once that you have this done, you can once again interact with the table of contents. Let's press escape. 
let's close this test and the next part is to upload this file to a server just for you to see the different steps that take in order to do that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open fetch which is the program that I use to FTP files to my university server I'm gonna have login information and then I'm gonna enter it at this moment in time I just want to test it so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag this folder that includes all of these files directly onto the server the transmission of all the smaller files is gonna take very quickly and the file that is gonna take the most time is your video there it is. Now I would like to test this interactive table of contents on the web. I'm going to open a browser. It's going to be in the same directory as my other files, but it's going to be named like that. And there it is. Now it's being transmitted from the university server. I can play it. Focusing attention. And it will have the interactive table of contents.